Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Ms. Cook, and we're going to continue our lesson 1.1, which was about categorical data. We're going to add one additional graph to the mix. It's another type of bar graph, and it's called a mosaic plot. The mosaic plot is another type of bar graph, and we're going to use this little story to help us out. When MBPS High School was built in 1957, the school needed to pick a mascot. Initially, the principal decided to have the students and teachers vote between three choices rams, falcons, or prairie dogs. He took a random sample of students and a random sample of teachers. The results of the surveys are given in the table. Note, we finally settled on the eagles, which was the best choice. So just a little disclaimer, this is a fictional story, but we're gonna use this data to help us learn about mosaic plots. So you see that we are coding the teachers and students who voted for the rams in pink, the teachers and students who voted for the falcons in blue, and the teachers and students who voted for the prairie dogs in purple. What we want to do now is, number one, create two bar graphs below to display the results. Use three different colors for the bars. So we are going to have a bar graph for the teachers and a separate bar graph for the students. We could, if you remember, use segmented bar graphs, but since the graphics give us a place to put the three separate bars for rams, falcons, and prairie, prairie dogs. dogs. That's how that's we're going to code, code those. those. Notice that the data is given to us in relative frequencies or proportions or percents. And so that is how our vertical axis is scaled. We've drawn our bar graphs according to the percents given to us in the table. And Number two asks us to complete the third graph by taking each bar from the teacher sample and stacking them using the colors to march, mark each section and then do the same for the students. So we're going to create that stacked bar graph similar to what we did in the previous lesson. We've stacked our bars from the teacher and the students bar graphs and we've got our segmented bar graphs. And we're ready to move on to question number three, which says, according to your displays, which mascot appears to have the most support? And we can see, looking at the segmented bar graphs, that if you combine the pink and the pink, it looks like clearly the rams have the most support for the mascot from the teachers and the student groups. Upon hearing the results of the surveys, the students argued that the decision was incorrect because 100 teachers had been surveyed and 500 students had been surveyed. So it seems like the students should have a stronger voice than the teachers because a much larger number of students voted in the survey. Based on the information that we now know that 100 teachers were surveyed and 500 students were surveyed, we can use the percents that were given in the table above to fill out the actual counts of teachers and students who voted for each of the three types of mascots. So we're gonna say 100 times 80% gives us 80, 100 times 10% gives us 10, 100 times 10% gives us 10. And then we're gonna do the same thing for the 500 students multiplied by the 30%, we're going to have 150. And the 500 multiplied by 60% is going to give us 300. And the 10% of 500 is 50. So now we've got what looks like a two-way table with counts. And let's calculate the totals for our columns and rows. How many times more students were sampled than teachers? Well, 500 students, 100 teachers, five times as many students. How can you update the third graph in number one to take into account the sample size, adjust your graph? So what we're gonna do is we're going to kind of make a new graph that never existed before, and we're going to use the proportionality that we see in the segmented bar graph, but we're gonna show the greater number of students by stacking the segmented bar graph horizontally. This horizontal stacking creates what we call a mosaic plot. And this allows us to see the relative quantities of teachers versus students that voted for the mascots. 
So we go back to question number five, which said, how can you update the third graph in number one to take into account the sample size? So we write down exactly what we did, add four more student bars so that there are five student bars and only one teacher bar, indicating five times as many students voted for the mascot. Now, question number six asks, what should they make the mascot and explain? So when we look back now at our mosaic plot, we see that a much higher proportion or a much greater area of the the combined mosaic plot is blue, which represents the falcons, instead of pink, which represents the rams. This makes sense, and this is shown in our two-way table when we see the total number of people, teachers and students combined, was the highest for the falcons. So the falcons should be chosen as the mascot. And the way that this is demonstrated is the greater area on the mosaic plot. Let's write down the important ideas that we learned in this mini lesson on the next page. Let's start with a recap of categorical versus quantitative. We know that categorical variables take on values that are either names or labels or categories, while quantitative variables are numerical and measure a quantity. Examples of quantitative variables would be favorite elective class. Examples of quantitative variables would be height or weight. When it comes to displaying categorical variables, we have two choices, bar graphs of the various types or circle graphs. And one of the most important reasons that we look at two-way tables or we look at any of these segmented bar graphs or mosaic plots is because we want to learn about association. Are the two variables related? Does knowing the, the distribution or the values in one of the variables help us to predict the values or the distribution in the other variable? Next, you've got a check your understanding question, uh, three questions, A, B, and C. So this is the end of the lesson. What I'd like for you to do when the video ends is work on these check your understanding Look at the two graphs, or I'm sorry, look at the two-way table and look at the mosaic plot, and then go back to the notes to try to figure out and be able to answer the questions. When you are done, check the posted guided notes on Canvas to make sure that you have answered these questions correctly or make any corrections that are necessary. Okie dokie, that's it. See you back in class.